It's in the Country Music Hall of Fame up in Nashville. I get pictures about it all the time. You just wasted a segment on the podcast. No, I, mean, you're well, good. I can read. I can talk no, about you can't. It's, our, it's already been done. <laughs> I won't have the same emotional reaction to it as I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fake emotion. You can't Cameron. fake emotion. So, are these all T-shirts that you made and made into curtains? These <laughs> are. Uh, yeah, that was my Christmas present from my wife. What my wife did was find a company. Because I can't throw old concert shirts away. I'm the same way. Or uh, old band shirts, all that kind yep. of stuff. Sh- Absolutely. Uh, you know, my friend's band, stuff like that. She found a company that turns them into a quilt. She had it made. We had to have 64 panels. It's eight by eight. Why when you put it? those two curtains together. So it's eight by eight, 64 panels, and then she cut it in half, sewed it up the middle, and made curtains out of it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've got some awesome. there's shirts up there that are 25 years old. Dude, that's awesome. You know? Well, I'm the same way. That's why I was asking about it because I've been thinking about doing something like that, doing like a quilt, because I've got a, the same thing. I just went to Walmart and bought like five bins to finally clean out my closet mm-hmm. of like all the old shit, you know, that had like little holes or little snags or, yeah. or like faded out real bad. And, I, I mean, I think I feel like two bins full of nothing but concert and band shirts. And so I've been thinking about trying to do something cool with them. So that's a, I mean, that's a great idea. Oh, it's awesome. I don't throw them away. And like my closet is like t-shirts, button ups, and then jeans. That's it. That's all I have. And boots. All right. Well, hey, we dove into it. Uh, we are a couple in with Cody Jinx. That's me. To my right, Bobby Keith Kilgore. How you doing, sir? Good, buddy. How are you? Good. Thank you. And to my left, Josh Thompson. <laughs> What's up? Getting, oh. getting into that cooler of beer. Oh, no. That, see, that's a hot beer. That yeah. Oh, hot no. Beer. You got to get a cold Oh, it's one. over there. Oh, well, oh okay. no. Anyway. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, good to see you, yeah. too. Good to see you. And um, directly across from me, as we are once again broadcasting from my office in north central Texas somewhere with the snakes and the scorpions and the spiders and all the, the, the fun stuff. But directly across from me, hailing from Waco, Texas, owner. Chief Bottle Washer, the Mad Hatter. I like that one. Cameron Morris. Hello. What's hey, up, buddy. Man? Standard Hat Works. Thank, Thank you for y'all. being here, man. Thank y'all for having me. Oh, I'm, man. I feel privileged. Thank you, man. <laughs> this is this is great for us. We talk with our friends. We uh, had this idea, you know, through the years, we've befriended so many cool people with so many cool stories and ball players, hat makers, singer songwriters, UFC fighters, whatever. Everybody has a cool story. So we've met a lot of people through the years, and uh, you're one of them, and we have a ton of stories. We do have a ton of stories. I hope I hope we can tell at least some of them. We'll tell us. Some of them, yeah. Name of the show. But I, I found out that. Uh, oh yeah, I'm apparently, sorry. A couple in, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> so I heard y'all had. Uh, apparently, his name is Fixin' to uh, Bobby on the show already. So your, I hope he didn't. Your take, roomie. Yeah, my roomie from yeah. Vegas. Yeah. And uh, I heard he already stole all my stories. I was going to tell. He, so. he didn't steal. He he had some good ones. I mean, but now we got to get his side of the plane. The plane was <laughs> epic. Yeah. That was probably yeah. one of the because he's the one that, the that dared times. that dared you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Of course, we're a couple in already going on to the plane. You <laughs> we, know? Were. we were. And uh, it was just funny because, you know, they they only serve – because we were, we were flying a very inexpensive – Spirit. You know, yeah, Spirit. Give, yeah, them their, gonna, give them their – Okay, name. well, they, all right. They, we were no flying delays. Spirit, a very inexpensive <laughs> flight, you know, and so they had piss and they had piss light, right? And so everybody wanted to have, <laughs> you know, one of those beers. Sorry, Spirit. They, they, no, nah, they just have two only two options, so. Well, that's what they serve, man. I mean, it's a – you know me. I'm like you. I drink Miller Lite, and that's all I drink, really. Well, you know my, what I mean? My problem was that they wouldn't let us have one before takeoff. Yeah, and so anyway, they wouldn't let us have one before takeoff. And so the thing was is that she was she was trying to fro- follow protocol, and she couldn't serve us before you know we took off. Her, her statement was was that we can't serve you until we were in the air. And so I was like, well, but you got to set air, the time. Like, yeah, what, at what point in the air is that applicable? No, so, no, you got to set the moment, like when the flight was, like you know, it's. Uh, Okay. It's the 11 p.m. last one day. All right. So I'll start from the beginning. I didn't know if oh, we'll go ahead and do the long version. So we, me and Bobby Keith, on, let me actually back up to that morning, okay? Because that's where it's really funny. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I, forgot I forgot about, about this. Yep. yep. 
So you went to the airport twice. I was really, <laughs> really excited about going on this Vegas trip, man. Like, I was pumped up. Bobby <laughs> Keith, you know, we, we arranged all of our flights. And I even, I will admit it, I even arranged my own flight and didn't even look at it. I saw that we were leaving, like, at, uh, we would leave at 11 o'clock in the morning. Or that was 11 o'clock. And so I was like, okay, we're going to leave at 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, Cody usually likes to sleep in a little bit, so it's it not too early. We, I get there and I'm like, he's like, Keith's like, meet me at the provost at, you know, 830 or whatever. We're going to, or prevo, sorry. We're going to, we're going to meet you there. And at 830, I'm like, all right, cool. So I get up like at 430 in the morning. Oh my I God. get dressed. I'm like going out there, get my breakfast, get my water burger, get my coffee. And I head to Dallas and go to meet y'all at Prevo or Arlington, whatever, wherever it was. And so I get there about eight o'clock. And so I'm texting Bobby Keith. I'm like, Hey buddy, you know, y'all on your way. And I don't get a response. And, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm at the right spot because you know Prevo there's just like bus after bus after bus and you know they all look the same after a minute and so I don't know where to go or anything and so I start texting Cody and I'm like man I hope he's up you know and <laughs> if it's Cody sometimes it's 50-50 it's with you you know what I mean if it's especially if it's early in the morning it's probably like 90-10 yeah you know that you're probably not going to respond it's true. It's true. so it was, it was fine but I just and so I texted Cody and I'm like hey man are y'all on your way up there are you with Bob are you with Bobby Keith or whatever whatever <laughs> about 30 minutes later I get a text back it's like no I'm at the house <laughs> and I'm like, dude, did I get it wrong? And so, anyway, Bobby Keith ends up calling me back, and, and it was the wrong eleven. Wasn't it was it? the wrong eleven. So yeah. I ended up showing up like really early. And but you so were excited. I was excited. So anyway, I hitched a ride with Bobby Keith on the way back, up there, so, back. <laughs> on the way back, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. We got up there, and so we get there again. What about ten, ten o'clock or something at night? I think we got to the airport at ten, yeah. And, uh, and of course, it's me, you, and Austin, Hot Rod, and uh, we're hanging out, and uh, we're trying to find you know Cody, and so we find him, and we sit at the bar and have a couple of beers there. And you say you found me at a bar? Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Well, it was, it was just an ironic thing, you know, just kind of out of the blue, you just happened to be there. But so, uh, <laughs> so we uh, we we sat down with with Cody, and you know, had a few beers, and so we were a few beers in, so we get on the plane, and we're already kind. You know, we're excited to go to Vegas and, you know, we got some, you know, a little alcohol in us. You know, we're revved up. And so we get on the plane and I'm sitting in front of Cody and Bobby Keith, Austin, Cody, you're sitting behind me. And then Bobby fixing to Bobby sitting across the aisle. <laughs> which you've never met him before. Which I've never met him, but I mean, we instantly hit it off. I mean, dude's, dude's an awesome guy. I love Bobby. Now you're besties. Yeah, we're our besties and roomies, and you know, I think we'll probably be roomies from here till eternity. I mean. Well, and you guys are working together. We'll get into that yeah, we are. So uh, so we get on the plane, and of course, you know, with fixing to Bobby, he's he's a very vocal individual. You know, he's he likes to talk really loud, and so we're all getting kind of loud on the, on the plane. Not obnoxiously loud, but you know, we're having fun. They they knew we were there. They knew we were there. We hadn't even left. And yet. so, uh, anyway, you know, Cody asked for a beer, and she's like, "Well, I'm sorry, sir, we can't, we can't serve you until we're the plane's in the air." And so I heard that, and I turned around to Cody, and I was like, "Hey, man, it'd be kind of funny if, uh, you know, as soon as the wheels like come off the ground, we're in the air, you know, you hit that serve me button, and she comes over here and gets us a beer." And I didn't think he, you know, I thought he might do it, and I thought it'd be kind of funny, but I didn't really think he would. So anyway, we getting the, we're getting ready to take off. Everybody's buckled in, and we're about to take off, and uh, you know, we're on the runway going up, and all of a sudden, man. And those wheels just come off that ground. I hear this boom. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. And I turn around and Cody's lights lit up. I'm like, oh shit. Well, this lady, and I mean, bless her heart, you know, she had to deal with us, but she uh she comes running up there and she thinks there's like this big problem, major emergencies. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. What's what's going on? How can I help you? And he's like, Yeah, can I get a piss light, please? <laughs> 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 I didn't. I didn't order a piss light. I don't know what they had, but I asked for it. Yeah, we we were talking about that with Bobby the other day. I mean, I'm too old to be doing that shit. No, you know, it was funny. No, it it was. It really was funny. I mean, it was innocent humor. She didn't take it as funny. I mean, she didn't think it was funny as we did. You know, I mean. (laughs) She was a little irritated and, and kind of scolded Cody about it, but you know, hey. You endangered you her life. Yeah, she thought we were all in danger. You know? And everybody's on the plane. Didn't you ask her why she got up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she goes. <laughs> <laughs> I, did I? She, yeah, yeah. He, he said, goes, "Why'd you get up?" And she goes, "Sir, you're endangering all of our lives right now." He goes, so, "Why'd you get up?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, that, 
Oh, I bet you were a treat that God. day. Dude, that was so You were just a treat to be around. Uh, no, because then he honestly, he genuinely went back after we were able to move around the cabin and we got the lights taken off of us and everything and, and uh, went back there and he was like smoothed it over with her and was like, hey, listen, we're just on a trip to Vegas. We don't get to do this very often. It's a guy's trip. We're just messing around, you know. Oh, yeah. No, so like I, it's, like we were saying with Bobby the other day, I said she uh, she didn't like me, but she loved me. Yeah, she did. But oh. that was a fun ride up there. And it was. Dude, that's like becoming my favorite trip of the year. Uh, I hear we already booked some dates for this I think it's already year. done. Yeah, it's already yeah. in the works. I so think it's I can't done. wait. I'll be booking hotels uh, tonight. Maybe. And man, honestly, it seems like, you know, we've only been, you know, the inaugural year was was uh, Keith's uh, uh, bachelor party. And that's kind of how it all started, I guess. I don't know if anybody knows it. But, uh, yeah. Now it's, it's, it's like becoming a every December thing. Yeah. So this year will be year number three. Number three. And, uh, you know, we have most of the OGs that are still going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, We'll probably have a couple drop off, a couple jump in, a couple of old schoolers come back, missed a year, Josh. Yeah. Josh is going to make it. Yeah, you, you oh, he's make coming. It I'll yeah. make it this year. I ask him every week. we got to go out. But here's the deal. When we went out, this is remember when we went to the Cowboy Christmas out there? They have all these booths set up. You know, it's just like just huge, just convention center, just full of just the most awesome stuff. Everything, gosh, anything what, you want, anything you they, want, anything is Western related. Western least. related, yeah. I mean, they've got they've got trailers, they got trucks, they've got clothes, yeah. they got jewelry, hats, boots. It's incredible. Uh, uh, ropes, saddles. I mean. Anything you want, they've got there. And I remember a few of the guys were asking me, like, Cameron, why don't you come up and sit up here? I'm like, dude, I don't want to come up here and watch all you some bitches have fun and me uh-uh. have to work. No, I mean, no, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't doing that. But you know, the trick is, is because uh, we went by, we went by to see uh, the guys from Bloomer mm-hmm. and. Uh, Great guys, by the way. Yeah, awesome people. Yeah, man. They, uh, they. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have them on the show. We're gonna. We're gonna see. We're gonna try to get them. Uh, Jake and Randy. Get Jake and yep. Randy. Yeah. 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 I was wondering how Jake was. Uh, was kind of reacting to you know because we go pretty hard for being yeah. some old schoolers. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. And he uh, jumped in that limo with us that one night. He, and, uh, he bowed out quicker than anybody. Like, didn't I was kind of looking to back at him while we were going. Yeah. I was like, to work. He did. He was. He was there working. We were yeah. there goofing off. That's true. That's why Cameron. He don't want to be that. He don't want to be. We'll walk by. Booth, yeah, right? man, dude, I would. I, you don't understand. <laughs> I, I would be a waste of money for me to do that. I, w- I just wouldn't have fun. So, see, all you got. But what we figured out was all you got to do is, is is buy your girl something while you're there. Amen. Hey, I did good on that too, you, dude. Remember? Thank you for doing yes. That. We were talking about that. We were mm-hmm. all walking around. I was like, I was like, all right, boys, go to one of these booths, buy something pretty. He said, meet back, here and, meet back here in 15. <laughs> we'll, we'll meet back here. I said, because <laughs> if you go home with this, and she uh, and she says, you remembered me on your guy's trip, and you went out of your way to go get something for me and bring it back, and you're like, hell yeah, baby. Yep. You're getting it in. <laughs> <laughs> you're sliding in. <laughs> No, that is true because I gave uh, uh, my wife uh, some earrings from there, and she absolutely loved them. They had some turquoise on them and stuff, and I mean, yeah, she loves that kind and of stuff. And it's not just that; it's you were, is you were thinking, thinking about it. You're right? About, yeah, yeah. And this is this is this is psychological warfare one hundred and one, gentlemen. That's why we've been with our ladies for you know I've been my million, fifteen years. Yeah, and, you know, you're twenty or something like that. Yeah, so. but no, that was man, that was such a fun time. And like I said, I'm looking forward to having Josh back this next year. Yeah, I'm year. excited. Yeah, and uh, we had some fun at the game at the tables and we did uh fixing two bobby did well in the slot machines oh shit i'm on the wrong page here look at that yeah you dropped your you i did dropped i dropped i dropped my book a while ago you're a couple in man i am a, well I we am are a well we are a couple in <laughs> several in now this is a couple in with cody jinx <laughs> uh, special guest today cameron morris from Thank standard hat works let's talk about hats uh, Standard Hat Works, 1909. You and I met five years ago? I met in uh, December of 2015. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So five years. Now, it would have been sooner than that because I, I, was, I started with Cody no, in February. Uh, no, you're right. It was, February December, of, it was December 2014. Yeah. 14. Yeah. Okay. 14, that's right. All right. Yeah. You're right. So okay. I was a year off. So it was 14. Because that we were playing in Waco. You were playing in Waco. And we I was m- pissed that night. You were, man. You want me to tell like kind of how I... Well, I want to talk about hats, not about how I threw a fit. No, no. But I'm just saying like how I came <laughs> about to do that. So, I've, you know, I, I worked a lot. I still work a lot of late nights. But, you know, I have it on a certain radio station there in Waco that plays a lot of independent artists and stuff. And one night, man, uh, I heard this... You know, the hippies and cowboys on the radio, man. And, dude, I fell in love with that song. And so I heard Cody jinx well immediately let me back up my heard it i imagine this like red shahan dude like big dude with big old red beard big ugly hat. big ugly fellow like red <laughs> absolutely gotcha <laughs> i love red I do too. but uh he likes meat so 
I imagine this guy, you know, to be this you know, big deal. And I heard Cody Jinx was coming to town. I was like, oh, shit, yeah. I'm going to go out there and go see him and everything. And so we go out there to a local establishment. I mean, they're, they're a chain or whatever, so they're not like... You know, we go up there and I'm expecting to see, you know, this big old cowboy up on stage or whatever. And I'm sitting up there on the stage. And, and I'm sorry, man, but I got to tell it, but there was literally like only like 30 people there. And oh, I it was, was awful. I was surprised. I thought this place was going to be packed out. I thought there was going to be a shit ton of people. And, you know, start people like, where the fuck is everybody? You know, this dude's awesome. Like his freaking sound. So anyway, you get up there and you don't look like you're in the best of moods. And I'm like, you know, I wasn't, I, I didn't want to be there. I was pissed at my manager for putting me there. Cause that particular chain, we never did well there. Those tend to be more like meat markets than. Yeah, I agree. Where, and I agree with a you. A place where people go to 100%. listen, listen to, a show genuinely you know? listen to the yeah. show yeah no i yeah. agree so i was i was pissed i had to be there that and i think the i think the people there were kind of rude to you that day and stuff and i don't think they were very accommodating from what i understand well, and, because that type of establishment they're not they know that the band is a necessary evil so they treat you as such you know yeah. it's kind of like you know here's your case of beer here's your money play from this to this this to this and you know get the hell out you know that type of place so you know i was kind of like oh, fuck i don't even want to be here anyway and so. i can tell i mean eh, not in a bad way but i mean you just Compared to the shows you have now, it's totally. I even still have that video. Well, things have night. changed a yeah. little bit. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, on the video, I've got, because I've, I've videoed uh, Hippies and Cowboys, and he literally, I think, is playing the neck of the guitar. He's strumming it. I mean, just strumming it, singing it, and, you know, a little emotion. But the people that were there were going crazy. Like, they were like true Cody Jinx fans. Like, these people, we, we talked to a few of them, and they're like, yeah, we go to all of his shows. He's fucking awesome, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I agree with you, you know? And, and so we, uh, so, you know, you, know, you could tell the people that were there were genuinely there to see you. You know what I mean? And so we listened to the sound. I didn't even think you did a set list that night. I didn't think you even said that. You're like, I ain't, I didn't do a set list. What do y'all want to hear or something like that? And I was like, you know, people were screaming out different songs and stuff. So that was the first time I really got to know you. But I saw you, and I don't know, man. Like I just felt like I don't know. I just like I like this dude. You know what I mean? Like I liked everything you were about. I like, even though you know it wasn't like freaking you know the night the Ryman. It was a freaking badass show. Y'all played. You know, Josh was with you. Y'all freaking jammed it out. Um, so anyway, I was like totally just sold on your vibe. You know the music, and so I wanted to meet you. And so afterwards, I snuck back there in the back, and you and Josh were back there smoking a cigarette, and y'all were just kind of looking at me like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" You know, <laughs> yeah. like, "Why are you back here?" So, and of course, me, I'm I don't always pick up on that stuff. You know, I just kind of just try to be friendly and you know and try to you know so anyway i'd introduce myself and was like i'm cameron and blah 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 and you know my cat's here in waco and you're like oh yeah good cool. luck with that whatever and um i could just tell like you're just not in a good mood so i tried to break the ice a little bit i was like man you know you look like you need to go burn one or something so and you're like i do and i was like well i'll be right back and so you're like meet me on so yes yeah, when you had dolly we had dolly yeah and we so smoked in dolly we went down to dolly and we actually that was a good time man that's like one of the i mean we actually i feel like we connected that night you know what i mean like we sat down we bullshitted i kind of told you about my my history where I was from and you kind of told me about what y'all did and what y'all were about and you know I was like dude I think we ought to get you a hat and you're like nah dude I don't wear cowboy hats I'm like I agree I don't think you should wear a cowboy hat you know and you're like but I I have been wanting to wear one and so you know I was like well let's do it and so I think you came by the next day yeah we came by uh, my thing was I always felt like I was the little kid wearing his dad's cowboy hat that's how cow that's how they looked on me yeah and you said you could uh you could fix that I, yeah. Well, and I was like, well, you know, you don't have to just get a cowboy hat. You're right. Not, I mean, that's probably not yours. And so you came by and that was when we came up with that little gunslinger idea. Yeah. And uh, kind of that Billy the Kid kind of open crown, uh, pencil rolled. And just, I think I think it's still kind of a cool old school looking. Oh, looking yeah. Vibe. The gambler. Yeah. With the open crown and yeah. everything we got. And that's when we came up with the first concept. Yeah. And then you texted me. A There's few a lot of later. pictures of me in that hat. I do. I have a few of them up in my shop. Too. Yeah, you do. So anyway, you, you kind of you wore that for a while and then you texted me that picture of lemmy yeah and was like hey man i really would like something like this and i so- remember doing that because i remember i remember thinking like okay cool because i loved i love the gambler and and i still wear it and i wear it around the ranch i remember thinking okay cool he's already got my measurements you know you all your equipment's very old school, and, and you measured my head with a device called a conformator. That's correct. Uh, and there are only two of those? That dates no, there's a lot of them. I mean, not a lot of them, but there's several of them, that, but they're, that's they're rare. dates back rare. to how, how 1830s, 1850s. So it's, it's like way old. Yeah. Uh, all, of, all of Cameron's equipment, you know, like the newest stuff he uses is made like in the 40s or 50s or right. something, you know. So I knew, I knew we could do a hat that looked cool. Yeah. And uh, I love Lemmy's 
his old cavalry hat. You know, I said, you know, I sent a picture of it to camera. I said, can we kind of make a mixture of like a traditional Western hat kind of mixed with Lemmy's old school, like Civil War type uh, cavalry hat? And he's like, yeah, we can do that. Thus, the fast hand was born. The fast hand yeah. was born. That's, tr- that's true. And I delivered it to you the first night that you played the main stage at Billy Bob's. Is that yeah. right? I think it was in March of 2000. That's why I was yep. thinking 2015 because no, right. it was March of 2015 yeah. when we delivered Fast Hand to you. So, uh, wow. So, yeah, that was cool. I remember you texted me after the show. You were like, my manager said, I can't ever take this hat off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, we got one. Well, and what's funny about that hat is that hat and my beard are the two most identifiable things in public. If I want to go incognito, I can do my best. I can take the hat off and put a ball cap on and do stuff like, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. Can't hide the beard. If I'm out, especially in a town that I'm playing that night and I go out before the show and I have the fast hand on, it's the most recognizable. It's like, oh, there's Cody. You can just totally tell. It's funny how I never wore hats and now, shit, dude, that hat is Cody Jinx. And my kids say that too. It's like, dad, you're Cody Jinx when you wear that hat. Well, that makes me feel good. I'm glad that you, you know, you like it so much. Because every, everywhere else, I'm just Cody. Like I don't have it on now. Yeah, you know, I'm wearing. I'm wearing. Actually, I'm wearing one of your <laughs> one of your ball caps. <laughs> and I appreciate the standard that. hat with ball cap. But yeah, the hat that's Cody Jinx. You know, the rest mm-hmm. of them, I'm just Cody or I'm Dad. You know, something like that. Let's talk about how you got into it. Let's talk about uh, about the start. All right. Um, 1909. How many owners? Well, I'm the sixth owner. Uh, since 1909, uh, there were several owners before me, obviously, but I bought it uh, officially back in June of 2013. Kind of a backstory: I'm from Waco, born and raised, went to Midway High School, graduated from Texas Tech with an engineering degree. I uh, went into construction after that, like construction management. And I always loved the reason I went into engineering is that I loved like building things. I was into custom homes, working for a custom home builder when I was going through community college in Waco. I just really enjoyed kind of doing that personal you know, interaction with people and like get to build them something that they're really happy about. You know what I mean? Like we did some really, really nice homes and, and people, you know, just see the reaction in their faces when you do a really good job. I mean, I just really had a lot of pride in that, I guess. Kind of like so, you feel when you accomplish the big Lego. Yeah, exactly. The $99 Lego. And so, That's how you uh, feel. And so, <laughs> when you're a kid. When you're a kid. <laughs> okay. So, yes, very much so. <laughs> So, uh, so I, anyway, I just enjoyed that. And, and I, and so I went to engineering, but when I graduated, you know, the money was into a lot of commercial stuff. And so commercial, uh, construction and residential construction is two totally different fields. You know what I mean? They just, they just operate differently. So anyway, I went to the commercial side, did it for about 10 years and just, just fed up, man. Like I was unhappy every day. I just didn't enjoy going to work. I, I just, I was miserable. I'd say I decided I needed a career change and, I uh, just wanted to do some anything other than construction. And so I was just kind of had my ears open and feelers out and kind of looking for something else. And I'd heard through the grapevine that this hat store was going to uh, be shut down, that they were going out of business. And uh, due to its history, plus its uniqueness of the shop, I thought it'd be kind of a cool business venture. So uh, I contacted the owner at the time. It took me about a month to finally contact him. And we set up a meeting and talked. And he said he was willing to sell it. And I was willing to buy it as, you know, at the right price. And, and you had made how many hats at this zero. point? Zero. Okay. I had not made one hat ever. So you're contacting a man about buying a hat shop, carrying on a name, a very popular name, and you haven't made a fucking hat. That is 100% true. And okay. at that time, I've been around over 100 years, right? One thing about me, though, is like, I will say, once I get my mind made up that I'm going to do something, and everybody else told me I was stupid as hell. Like, this is the one thing, like, this never should have happened. I had, I can't tell you how many bankers tell me no. I can't tell you how many people told me it was unbankable. Can't tell you how many people told me I was stupid. Why would you take a good paying career and a job that you've got right now and go risk it on a hat shop? Because at the time, nobody wore hats. I mean, this is before they started becoming popular again, which has only been like in the past few years. Yeah. And um, so they were all like, who buys hats anymore? Who works? You know, nobody does this. You know what I mean? And so everybody pretty much told me I was a dumbass for doing it. Again, man, the way I operate, if you want me to do something, tell me not to do it. You know what I mean? Type of deal. I kind of use that as motivation and kind of just just wouldn't take no for an answer and finally was able to get the funding together and buy it. And so I spent every night and every weekend pretty much for the next eight months up there not making a dime, just trying to work on as many hats as I could. How did uh, you figure out how to do it? 
the previous owner had walked me through about an hour and a half uh, tutorial on how to operate the equipment. <laughs> well, you, you so, walked us through that same tutorial. Yeah, and I don't basically know, what I, I show y'all, it. basically what I show people and what I show y'all in there is kind of what I got. There's so there's no like two year apprenticeship. You're not going no. up there and learning from the old sensei. I tried, and you have an hour and a half. Hey man, this does this. This does this. This does this. Yep. You don't burn here's your the keys. Yep. Yep. Here's the keys, basically, and and same thing on shaping except shaping was about 10 minutes which was scary as hell that was probably one of the scariest moments was having to open up and having to go initially shape somebody's hat and not knowing what the hell you're doing and i will admit man <laughs> i was not that good man like i mean it just it was what it was you know i mean but the only way i figured out to do it is just to do it you know i mean there's no youtube videos there's no or at the time there wasn't i don't know if there is now but there's no instructional videos there's no college there's no there's none of that you're just you just it, figured it out you've got to which is it amazing out. to me because usually in something like that if you're going to be a young blacksmith you you hang around and do your apprenticeship and, you know right. become a blacksmith right you just had to figure it out that's <laughs> figured out which is <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. That's crazy. I couldn't, you know. Well, I understand that what we do is unique as well, and it, it's it's also something that not very many people get to do, or it's a craft that not very many people have. You had zero guidance. Yes, but again, I had you know, just like y'all. I mean, dude, how much determination and willpower, and I mean, naysayers do you have to overcome to do what you do? You and that's know, what it comes thing. down to, right? You know, just like we yeah. talked about. You know, you told me a great line that I have has not come out of my head since you told it to me. But you know, everybody wants to be an outlaw till it's time to do outlaw shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. I mean, you want to do it and you want to, you want to, you know, do it, have this great, you know, legacy name, you know, craft, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Go out there and do it, big boy. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of the way I approached it was just put your big boy pants on and let's go figure it out. And, you know, and, and if you screw up, you just learn from it and you go on and you try not to do it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, that's kind of the mentality that I took when I did it. One thing that's always been amazing, and we've talked about this, is whenever he, he bought that hat store, the amount of orders that were still there. Oh, yeah, man. It was a, oh, dude, it was, it was bad. Well, and I don't want to say anything bad about the company has, has been a great company for a long time. You know what I mean? There for a short period of time, it got chaotic in there. And yeah, so there was a lot of stuff that was backed up, a lot of stuff that hadn't been addressed. I mean, years of stuff, not just like months. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of reorganization that we had to do, kind of a figuring out your own system type of deal. And that's kind of why I like I, I look looking back on it, you know, when you're going through adversity and you're going through, you know, a trying time, you know, you never you never really see kind of the the full benefit of it. But when you look back on it, you know, you're like, damn, I kind of I'm kind of glad that I did it that way because if not, I wouldn't be to where I am now. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I look back on it. Is if I hadn't been thrown into it and I would have been taught, maybe I would have been taught some bogus, messed up way that wouldn't have got me to where I'm at today. You know what I mean? Like everything that I do is based on what I've, you know, learned myself and the practices that I feel like has best suited my, the way I do it. You know what I mean? So right, wrong, or indifferent, it's my way. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's not a hat person out there that does it the way I do it. And it's just because I didn't know any better. I had to figure out my own ways of doing it. Oh, that's your art, though. So, yeah. you know, it, I would definitely not encourage young people to play guitar like I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it works for me. Yeah. But my my janky ass, what you know, and so it's it's the same for you. It's it's It may be unconventional. It may be unlike what anybody else does, but... You know, it's what you do. Yeah. And that's what matters. And that's what's, you know, kept you around all these, all these years later. Cause to this point, you probably couldn't sit here and name on all your fingers and toes, all the guys like me or women like me or whatever that you've made hats Absolutely. for in this business. Man, we've been blessed, man. We've had guys like y'all and I mean, and others that have really been supportive of us. And that has been a big part of our success. I mean, um, to have, people uh really stand behind us and 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 genuinely support us like i was telling you earlier you know i mean it's not just like oh yeah go there you know like y'all really the feedback that i get is that y'all genuinely talk very well about us you know what oh, i mean sure, from yeah. the customers that come in and it's not just i'll oh, go see Cameron or whatever though i just got here you know what i mean like y'all have conversations about it and uh not just like i said not just y'all but you know others out there and and that means the world you know what i mean like to have people that we respect so much and so highly talk good about us and really endorse our product, man. Like that's like the best. Did you, did you do that on purpose? You know, kind of finding these guys or was that kind of a marketing thing that just kind of happened and you're like, Hey, this is cause I assume you don't have a big marketing budget per nope. se. So is, 
Was that intentional? Absolutely. So yes, yes, and yes. So, all right. So I've always been a big fan of music. Like music has always gotten me through everything. You know what I mean? Like growing up, you know, I would sit there and read all the the lyrics and the tape cassettes. You know that you'd pull out and it'd be like ten miles oh, long. Yeah. And you'd yeah. read all the lyrics and and so music has always just been just something really important to me and something I've always loved and always respected. I mean, growing up, I would have loved to been a musician. I tried to actually play guitar when I was like six or seven and just didn't have it. You know, and I even tried later on in one of my teens to try to play it again. And I just I just don't have that ability. That's why I respect what y'all do so much. It's like you know, y'all number one have the ability to play an instrument. Number two you can create something from thin air i mean to me that's amazing you know and I, that's why i so highly respect what y'all do and so when we got into this you know cowboys are pretty much taken up with certain brands you know and and they're at the time they were really the only ones wearing hats were like the western lifestyle the rodeo cowboys the working cowboys and we had a little small niche of that um, but at the time because of, due to the situation and the, the state that the company was in we just didn't have a big piece of that market so again with having a low budget and basically zero marketing budget, I was like, well, you know, I really respect these guys. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to put money into it. Why not do something that's beneficial to them and beneficial to me at the same time? You know what I mean? And so we started kind of going and picking guys that we really respected and liked. And, and, you know, most of them were independent artists um, because I respected the way they were going about their business and the way they were building their business and how much risk and how much confidence in themselves it took to do what they do. And so I was like, it's kind of the same story, just different you know work environment more or less you know what i mean and so you know we got on you know we kind of was able to give a hat to a guy and then to another guy and then you know word kind of spread a little bit and then kind of just got bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and bigger and so so yeah so i mean i never did it asking and y'all know i've never asked y'all for anything you know what i mean like i never said hey this is my hat i don't want you to do this for me you know what i mean it's always been a gift and like something that i've wanted to do Mm -hmm. for you if you like my stuff and you you appreciate my product yeah please tell people about it if you don't, throw it in the trash, give it to your buddy. I don't care. You know what I mean? But I want this is not this is a no strings attached gift. You know yeah. what I mean? And so it kind of started out as that and it just kind of grew from there. And and so but it, it kind of helped us to market it. You know what I mean? I wasn't just like piss my money away to like a radio station or a TV station that would just talk about me just to talk about yeah. me. I wanted people to genuinely talk about my product in a in a light that was positive and that was um that they really liked it and not just you know, because I paid them or I gave them something. You know what I'm saying? Um, we've done a lot for a lot of people, and a lot of them have stayed around, and a lot of them have moved on, and, you know, it's just how it is. But guys like y'all and, and the Josh Wards and the Jason Edies and, you know, Zane Williams and the Whiskey Myers, the Wade Bowens, I mean, those guys have really, really supported well, us. Well, and uh, you know? Midland wore your hats to the Grammys, right? Yes, and, yeah, that was a cool thing. How cool is that? That was cool. I mean... Yeah, no, we were on the Grammys and that was cool. We got actually an inside edition story out of that. So that was kind of cool. Well, you were just in uh, Texas Monthly. You were just right? in Texas Monthly. Yeah, yeah, we were in Texas Monthly a few months ago. Uh, so that was really cool, man. That was a special deal. And, and uh, man, I mean, of course, you know, grow up in Texas, Texas Monthly is like, Oh yeah, you know, like yeah. the crown jewel of I, magazines. And, yeah. and, you know, I, and I have never been in Texas, and I, I know if I were that I would think it was like way cool. Yeah, it was just so cool, man. Like to have Texas Monthly contact you and say we want to come down there and do a photo shoot, and we want to have you in this next issue, and blah blah blah. I mean, that's it was great. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's great that they do that for us though. To be in Texas monthly, it, it's costly, you know what I yeah. mean? It's, it's not cheap. Yeah. And, um, to have them just come over and want to do a story on you, that was, that was pretty nice. I quit doing interviews a couple of years ago, but I would, I would probably make an exception for Texas Dude, monthly. I'm telling you, man, like, well, now it's coming. It's hanging up. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> I think so. oh, yeah, it's hanging up in that, my yeah. shop. I'm telling you. And, <laughs> Hell uh, yeah, it's hanging up in my shop. <laughs> you know, you know what also I think is cool about your business is Catherine came mm-hmm. with it. Which, absolutely, man. Catherine, I could not, absolutely, I could not do what I do without Catherine. Catherine man. is awesome. And I don't know if, tell many, us about Catherine. Well, I don't know if many of the listeners know, but there's, up until this last January, there's only been like two people in the shop. So there's me and Catherine and Catherine is a seamstress and she does uh, all the sewing of the sweatbands, all the sewing of the hat bands, liners, any of the cool stitching you see on the hats. That's all of Catherine. Um, she's been a blessing, man. Like 
she she uh, she worked for the previous owner, and then when I bought it, she decided to stay on. And um, a few years into it, we were able to put her on uh, full time. And uh, man, she's just she's been great and sweetest lady. If you ever call up there, she's she may be one of the ones that answers. We have Julie up there now, which mm-hmm. is she's been a great addition, um, helping us with marketing and, and sales and stuff like that. So, but yeah, Catherine's just she's uh, just one of those like grandma types, you know, that yes. sits up there and she gives great hugs. And she gives oh, great yeah, she hugs. Does. Yeah, she, <laughs> she yeah. loves. Seeing Cody come in, yeah, you know, I love seeing loves her seeing too. Me, so, but she's just a sweet lady, and like I said, I couldn't do what I do without her. I bet I mean, you were glad when she said she would stay on when you, man, I, t- I totally bought that cause, company because I, and you know, it's hard enough trying to figure out how to make a hat and shape a hat, much less trying to figure out how to sew at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, pro- I pro- she might probably just felt it. sorry for you. She probably did. She was like, man, <laughs> this, this, this gringo, no this gringo over here. He, he has no to, idea what he's doing. Oh man. It was, it was a mess. I, can, I mean, I don't want to <laughs> divulge too much, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. But, um, but no, like I said, thanks to guys like y'all. I mean, we've gotten, gotten out there and gotten a good name. We had met each other a couple times. We met at the show and then you made me a hat. And I don't remember if it was coming to pick one up or whatever, but we, you were at your old shop mm-hmm. off the highway there. We were still in Dirty Dolly at the time. Dirty Dolly. And we came in just to hang out. And you were actually selling tickets to the show that yep. we were playing. I think, that you were playing. I think we were at the Melody, Melody Ranch. Ranch. Melody Ranch. Melody Ranch. Yeah. 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 yeah we, were, we were selling tickets to the show. We were sitting in there drinking beer and uh, people were coming in looking at stuff. And we were just kind of hanging out, you know, sitting there on a bar stool at the counter. And all of us had beers open and we were just shooting the shit and people were walking in and saying hi and people were walking in and walking right past me and getting concert tickets. <laughs> and I remember You didn't have the fast hand on. And I I didn't. I was probably wearing pajama pants. <laughs> yeah, I bet you know? I think you were. <laughs> so there, camo ones you wear. <laughs> you know, and and uh, this was this one lady comes in and she walks up to the counter and you know, she's she's won two tickets to the show that night. And I was like, Who you, who do you want to see? And she's like, Cody Jenks and I say, like, That dude's Sucks. <laughs> she, she, she had this like, and I was like, no, I'm just kidding. He's all right. You know? <laughs> she never did figure it out, you know. But you no, know, it's funny because you say that. That, but uh, that was just in your workplace. Yeah, we just would go up there and hang out and do that. And, and actually, I'm gonna tell a story on you too. Is that same day you were in there, we were sh- shaping a hat. There was a young kid, probably about 17 or 18 years old, and they were going to the show that night, and they were getting hats to go out. And you were just standing there drinking a beer and we were all just kind of BSing and, and just shooting the shit. And, uh, you know, it takes me about 15, 20 minutes to, to shape a hat, right? And so he had been there about 15, 20 minutes and we'd all been talking or whatever. And, you know, he gets his hat and he walks out the door and like two or three minutes later, he comes barreling back in. Yeah. So, oh my God, I didn't realize who you were. He's like, do you mind signing my hat? <laughs> we, yeah, we were. up talking like another five minutes or so to you. And, we were just and, sitting uh, there shooting the bull. Like yeah. it, he had no idea. <laughs> he had no idea that who you were or anything. And then when he did realize, I guarantee his friend said something whenever they yeah. walked out. And, and uh, he was like, oh my God. And he came back in there. And, but that's cool though, because that's happened several times. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, a uh, lot of artists that's happened to. The, they'll sit in there and I've had one even talk kind of trash about one in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name names, but he was standing there and we we're selling tickets to the show and this girl comes in and, and she's like, you know, I need to get tickets to this show tonight. I'm like, Oh yeah, you going to see, you know, so and so and so and so she's like, Yeah, I guess. Uh really more or less, you know, this other guy. And I said, Oh yeah, well, what about so and so who was standing in my shop? She was like, Yeah, he's okay, <laughs> but last time I saw him he was out of tune. And uh <laughs> and so that guy he kind of looks at her and Kind of looks back at me and looks back at her again. He's like, no, you're right. I was out of town. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so anyway, she ends up finding out who it was. And so it was funny. But yeah, guys come up there and hang out. And I like it. That's what... I wanted. That's all. I've always wanted it to be like a not a safe place. That's a, you know, it is but, no. But it's great. I mean, it's like, it's a like a good it's place like, where you can come in and just like chill out and not be bombarded. And it's like, like a dude beauty shop. Yeah, like a you know. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, you know, I mean, just come in. We're fixing to actually start. We're going to uh, you know have complimentary drinks and stuff. We're gonna have a private shaping area. Yeah, so we can kind of get out of the way. We're not like just out in front of everybody shaping hats and. People and feel more comfortable. That's the biggest thing is we want people to enjoy the experience when they come in. Well, and, and you never uh, know, who's and there. that's what it is. And is an experience. It is an experience, and you never know who's going to stop in. Like the last time, my wife and I came down a little over a month ago mm-hmm. to have some hats worked on. Right. You know, mine and my wife's. You know, which you've made a ton of hats for for both of us. And um, we met one of the most unique characters I've ever met in my life. We got to get him. At, on you, here. And I'm, I hope to get him one day. His name's Parnell McNamara. He's the sheriff of Waco, and. Just 
just look him up. It's an amazing story. This guy is wide earth. He is current time. You Absolutely. know, he's uh he's in his early seventies now. Still a lawman. Been a lawman his whole life. Came from a whole line of lawmen. But he brought in a collection of these hats that he just wanted to show you. Mm-hmm. And each hat had a story. And th- w- what I found interesting about him is that he would see somebody wearing a hat and walk up and say, "I really like that hat. I'd like to hear the story behind it, and I'd like to buy it from you." Yep. And he buys people's hats right off their head. He bought wow. my hat off my head. Did he really? He has one of my hats, yeah. <laughs> my only black hat I've ever made myself, he has it. Yeah. And that was his only black hat that he's ever like actually p- purchased and worn, is what he told me. No kidding. Yep. Um, you've made hats for, for him, law enforcement, Texas Rangers there as well, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, you're right. He's a he's a cool, interesting person. Like, um, y'all have seen uh, uh, Hell or High Water? Yeah. Jeff uh, Bridges' character yes, is modeled Jeff, after him. Absolutely. Well, and, and he's played himself in like two other movies. I was looking that up as well. So mm-hmm. what was funny about it, I was talking with you earlier about it today is he's just this absolutely badass revered lawman's lawman like yep. he just is super cool dude loves to talk about jeeps mm-hmm. he's a jeep guy him he's and his wife he, he and his and wife found that out and we did his, my wife was there too and we were talking about jeeps and they were in his wife's jeep and this this, this beautiful small little dainty lady you know driving this big jacked up jeep just like my wife yep. you yep. know yeah. And uh, so we're sitting there, you know, talking to each other. We're sitting right by my hat, the fast hand display in the glass case. Mm-hmm. He has no idea who I am. Nope. And I have no idea who he is. <laughs> right. Exactly. We both know that we agree that there's a story in every hat and we like Jeeps. Yep. So that's, <laughs> we, we stood and talked with him for like 45 minutes. Absolutely. And but like you said, you know, everything happens for a reason, and there's a reason that y'all met that day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, sure. just like well, a relationship that that Bobby Keith, uh, he he met the Baylor co- uh, Baylor head coach of the baseball team, yeah, uh, Coach Rod in our shop, and it's kind of same thing. I was like, man, y'all y'all two need to know each other. You know what I mean? And yeah. And him and Coach Rod are, are really good buddies now and uh, do a lot of stuff together. And so that's it is really cool, man. We get a lot of unique individuals in our shop and a lot of just good people. And that's what makes it fun. I came from an industry that was, you know, so contractual and so high strung. And I mean, it's just it's so nice to be able to go to work and enjoy being around the people that you're around. You know what I mean? Your customers, your employees. Um, you feel like what you're doing is, you know, means something. Uh, just like, you know, Cody said, you know, he, you know, guys like you, you know, validate what I do. You know what I mean? Because just like you said, you know, if we hadn't met, there would be no fast hand hat. Not to say that that's a huge deal, but to me it is. You know what I mean? Like, sure. And if, that's we, if we hadn't crossed paths hands. and we hadn't yeah. sat down and you hadn't agreed to, you know, burn one with me, we, you know, we may not be si- sitting here talking today, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's funny how things do happen and work out and and uh man i'm just i feel like i'm so blessed to to be able to do this and like i said be able to be a part of the music scene too you know it's kind of funny how we've all ended up kind of working together in certain things like the last three guys to be on the show are you andrew kashner with banded bobby robinson which we'll get into some stories about vegas and him and (laughs) you guys becoming like best friends besties just <laughs> within five minutes like stepbrothers like yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yep. we just become yeah. best friends i mean it was it was really that quick uh, i love bobby yeah bobby is uh he's doing your caps your baseball caps absolutely man um he's also doing uh true grits which yep. means he's in on my business yep and he's also doing bloomers and it's awesome. I'm so happy. And it couldn't happen to a better guy. And the thing about I like about Bobby, he's just like us. He's a hardworking guy. Yeah. He's the one up there, you know, making it work. He's making it happen. Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff in-house, which a lot of companies are doing overseas now, which I really love. I just, man, I just respect the way people, you know, it's it's easy to take the easy road, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, to, but to do it the hard way and, and, and to do it the right way, I guess. I mean, and to try to profit and make profit of it, it's hard. Well, and the guys that we work with and the people that I'm, that we just sit here and name, those are personable people. Absolutely. Those are all people. Those are handshake guys. Absolutely. Bottom line. 100%. You, you know, I mean, paperwork. Fuck that. Fuck paperwork. Yeah. You know, but paperwork's not worth shit. Absolutely. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, you know, that's that's the commonality that I find in that group of people, the guys that, that we, the, you know, the guys that we go to Vegas with, those types of individuals that, you know, have uh, have worked their asses off. And, and somehow or another, we all end up like cross-branding, working together, which is, uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun anyway. And that, 
exactly. And that's, that's the exact point. It's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And probably the best time that I've had out of all the shows I've been to, probably the funnest and the best experience I have was in Waco when y'all were down there and everybody's families were there and every, I mean, it's, it's become well, a big family. The Christmas you know show I mean? this past year? Those no, shows? well, no, the one before the, that. The, uh, the last full band show. Yeah. The, the last yeah. full band. When everybody had their kids down there, everybody had their wives down there, you know, I mean, it was like, a, honest, like a family reunion. And, you know, you know and that's what it's kind of become, this whole True Grit, this whole True Grit um, family has just grown. And it's, and it's all good people, too. You know what I mean? There's not one person in there that's that's not a good person. You no, know? it's it's tight knit. You know, we, we keep a very careful eye on those we, uh, we, we bring into the inner circle. But, you know, that's what you have to have. And your success is based off the people you help success as well. Absolutely. You know, you do good. I do good. Yep. You know, then that's, that's kind of, if, if everybody around me is doing better, I'm doing better. Well, and you want to surround yourself around people that, you know, are, are also ambitious and that are also trying to do better for themselves. And you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's just like, it's just a lot of like-minded people. You know what I mean? We all do different crafts. We all do different things, but we all, I, th- I feel like that we all have the same type of mindset. You know what I mean? When it's time to, when it's time to have fun, we have fun. When it's time to take care of business, we take care of business. Yeah. When it's time to take care of your family, you take care of your family. You know what I mean? And like we all kind of are like minded and we don't sell out for anything. You know what I mean? We don't sacrifice our integri- integrity to, you know, for dollars. Well, like you said a while ago, and I got to give props to my buddy Kip Wolfmeyer because, like you said, like you were just saying, everybody wants to be an outlaw until it's time to do outlaw shit. Yep. That's Kip's, uh, his trucking company. That's their slogan. And I was, and I was like, dude, you put shit on your company (laughs) t-shirt and he he was like yeah because everybody wants to be an outlaw till it's time to do outlaw shit and that's true like you damn right you know he's true and he spent years and years in nascar so he's kind of got that mentality as well but i don't know that's the only way to do it that's the only way i know to do it that's how my dad did it yeah you know that's how i was raised i don't know man i love it i think it's a fantastic story well thank you i appreciate it you know you told me because first of all, I didn't realize with all these years of, of us knowing, I didn't realize you had never shaped a hat until you bought the place. But, you know, we were talking and I had been very uh, reluctant to get a hat. But you, I mean, you say that there everybody has a hat. Absolutely. And, and, and you can and you feel like you can do that. Well, you I can feel, find that. Well, just, I, you know, I, I try to listen to like with you, you know, you're kind of like you're that person. You know, I, yeah. I don't. I'm not a hat guy, you know. Which, by the way, ever since you've got, I have it not worn. And I love it. it to a show. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's great. And everybody has. Dave's still on the fence, you know. I mean, we, we haven't gotten Dave to come. Everybody around, in our band, but Dave, our everybody. drummer. Everybody. And, I'll, and Dave just doesn't wear a hat. No, I know. But I'm the other missing. five of us, y'all legit every night. wear them every night. But I think, like, through talking with you and be like, you know, hey, let's find something that you do like, because I do feel like everybody wants to wear a hat. Period. I feel like everybody on this planet wants to put on a hat. They just have not found the right hat that suits them to make them feel confident. So that's the whole thing is yeah. finding what's going to make you feel confident. What are you going to be able to walk into a room and, you know, no matter what anybody says or thinks, you're going to wear that hat, you know, with style you know what I mean? and with confidence. And let's find that. You know what I mean? Let's let's talk and let's get to know you. And that's why I do like people coming down there. I hate doing Internet orders. I absolutely hate doing Internet orders. It's a it's a necessity nowadays. You know, dealing the times we're in, but I would so much rather you have you come in and we talk face to face, so we can actually understand. And I understand what you want, and you can understand what we can deliver. You know what I mean? Because the worst thing in the world um, is for a customer to be disappointed. You know, with something that we did. You know what I mean? One of my biggest fears, and that's why I stay so close to the business and just won't just hire a bunch of people to come in there, is because. I feel like people genuinely make the trek come to come down there and see us, and I don't want them to be have a bad experience. I don't want them to come down and go, "Oh man, I just drove six hundred miles for that." You know what I mean? And so we want we generally want all of our customers to be happy, and so you know to be able to talk to you face to face and be able to understand what you're wanting, to be able to actually measure your head and make sure we get it right. You know, we want it to be a, a whole big deal when you get your hat. You know, we it's want an experience. Be, yeah, we want it to be like, yeah, you know, this is my hat. I'm going to be able to wear it for a lot of years, you know, and like I said, y'all have, y'all have done that. Um, you know, and, and I, in fact, I need to get you another hat. <laughs> I've been mean to do that. Oh, he doesn't got but, the color picked out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I need, I need to get down there. Yeah. We, we got, we but, got some things to talk about. 
But I love doing them for y'all, man. And I love that y'all wear them, man. That, that's to me is the, the biggest reward right there is to be able to watch y'all enjoy them and wear them night after night, you know? Well, the thing to me is the, the thousands of customizations. I mean, it's not just a black hat or whatever. I mean, I mean, rabbit, beaver, chinchilla, blends, brims, yeah. hat bands. I mean, every last customization, there's, yeah. you can do it's whatever. Endless. I always kind of joke around saying like, we're like Burger King. You can have it your way. And it's not just, it's not just cowboys or Western stuff. Right. I right. mean, like my wife, one of her favorites is that gray fedora that you made her. It is, it's probably one of the most Bitchin' hats. Nice. I've ever, it's so cool. Well, I'm glad you like it. You know, and that's, I, I brought that one in today to right. show uh, Andrew. Right. It's, well, it's incredible. Yeah. And that's the thing, man. You can, and, and, you know, for the longest time, people have been fixated on you have to be a cowboy to wear a hat, you know, and that's what we've been trying to, you know, um, get over, over the past few years is that, no, you don't have to be a cowboy to wear a hat. You know, used to, man, go back and look at those pictures from the 40s. Everybody's wearing a damn hat. The yeah. women too, you know? Yeah. It wasn't until the 60s until, until um, J- JFK, well, no, JFK went to office. Oh, we're JFK. <laughs> well, no, JFK went to office and was the first president to uh, be inaugurated without a hat on. After that, the hat industry it's like, just went downhill after that. There was a resurgence about uh, 1980, you know, when the Urban Cowboy came out. There was a resurgence in hats. Uh, but up until recently, I mean, it's been, nobody really thinks about them, you know. So that's why we were, I was discouraged so many times, you know, about buying this is because they were like, how are you going to, how are you going to support a family on making hats and cleaning hats? You know what I mean? When that's all you do, you know, so it's, it's a, it's been a challenge, but man, I'm, I'm so glad I stuck it out and you know, I can't be happier right now, man. You, you know what I mean? You said making hats and cleaning hats. I want to touch on that too. You can take something that's been in somebody's attic for 50 years and before that, for 50 years before that, it may have been the nastiest beat up oil crap yep. bullshit on it and you can rework that hat yep. and you can resize it yep. you can do whatever you can make a brand new hat out of it right and that's pretty cool because i didn't know because lo- i've learned a lot you know obviously getting to know you over the past few years and being at your shop and watching you work and mm-hmm. and people bringing hats in and you know just it looks like somebody just rolled over it with a car <laughs> you know and you're like oh yeah yeah i can fix that yeah you know and, and and you can and you take it and you make it brand new and uh my dad had an old silver belly and you worked on it last time i was down there right you know we basically turned it you know from an old school cowboy hat cowboy hat silver belly into a fast hand silver right. belly that fit me yeah you know and my dad loved it you know just because now the hat's being worn again yeah you know type of deal so is you can you know not just making new hats you can you can take the past and you can give it life again Yep. We actually got to um, do the old Low Rangers hat, restore it. It was going up for a uh, sale and auction in Waco. And um, uh, yeah, they brought it in. They wouldn't leave it. They had to watch me do it because they wouldn't leave it alone with me. Uh, but, uh, yeah. You don't want to do a, do a <laughs> <switcheroo>. <laughs> chain of command. But yeah. that was a uh, old Clayton Moore. I don't know if you remember. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you're we're all about the same age. So y'all watched Lone Ranger, the black Absolutely. and white version back in the day. Sure. It was on 39. Yep. And Clayton Moore, he was a Lone Ranger. And that man has the smallest head. He has, he wears a six and five eights. Wow. Or he wore a six and five eights. And, uh, so yeah, that's like little kid size. But I mean, you've made, you've made a hat for John Schneider too. John Schneider, that was one. I don't get starstruck very often, but Bo that Duke. was Bo, Bo Duke, Duke got man. you a little starstruck. That was awesome. Cause he brought the General Lee. Uh, I mean, and of course, Bo Duke's one of my first memories. I mean, me like, too. Duke's of Hazards, where I got my love for Waylon. I mean, yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. That's I have I had my old guitar that I used to play in front of the mirror when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, it was a Duke's a Hazard guitar. I've got my Duke's a Hazard memorabilia up in my. That's a Duke's a Hazard TV tray. That it I, looks like a TV tray that I've had since I was seven. I love it. I've had that for well, thir- thirty-seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, or forty-three, yeah, 43, 36, 30, 33, 30, 33, Cody. <laughs> No, that's all, and that's what I'm saying. Like one of my first loves was, you know, Dukes of Hazard. I mean, yeah. I remember watching it every week. Yeah, and but hell, we'd record it, you know, on the old VCRs that had yeah, like you could record it on the eject up top, old you know VHS I mean? cassettes. And uh, but yeah, so having him in the shop was really cool, and and he's a really nice guy. And, yeah, and so yeah, that he's was, back out singing on the road again. He is, man. Yeah. He uh, he did a deal last year called the Odyssey, where he was releasing a song a week every yeah. week for a year. So it was like fifty two songs. And uh, that, you want to talk about stories? That guy, he'll talk your daggum ear off, man. He'll he'll keep you going for a couple hours. Well, I mean, you know, he was huge, dude. He was he was just as big as Elvis, probably at one point, right. early mid eighties. Like eighty two, three, four, five. Whenever he was coming off of huge Dukes of Hazard success, 
and his singing career. Like that guy had some hits, man. Oh, yeah. He had some great songs. What's yep. in memory like you? Yep. The great song. And he yeah. still has good songs. And and that guy, he's just he's an amazing person. Like you said, he's a great actor, a great songwriter. Um, he's just he's a cool guy. And he's lived like he's lived the life. I mean, he's lived with Johnny Cash. You know, he's partied with Waylon. I mean, he's been with all these guys. And like I said, the stories that this guy has is just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, he'll literally, I mean, he's a three hour show easy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but he's a great guy. Again, one of the coolest guys as far as, you know, uh, stars that I got to meet, I guess. Yeah. And, um, so we just got through doing one for Chip Gaines. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of a big Chip deal. and JoJo. Yeah. Well, and he's got, he's got Joanna's hat. I, at yeah. The I got Joanna's hat at the shop. Yeah. And, uh, she needs on. to come pick it up. Actually, I, while while we were in this podcast, I got text by by her assistant, so I'm sure it's coming up this week. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, man. Like I said, we've been really blessed, and you know, hopefully, we can just keep making a good product and having good people represent us. So. Yeah. Well, it's important, man. Keeping good people around you. Yeah. That's uh, that's the name of the game. But uh, if you want to do your history, you can look at a little. You can look it up a little bit more um, in terms of uh, standard hat works. Uh, all your way back to uh, William Gross. Yeah, William Gross was the original owner back in 1909. Yeah, he uh, sold it to a guy named Bill Martin, who is Steve Martin's uncle, the Steve Martin. No kidding, the Steve yeah. Martin, the Steve Martin, banjo uh, playing full. Yeah, he is. And so uh, Bill Martin had it from the 40s all the way up to the 80s, and then a guy by the name of uh, Doug Eastland bought it from him, which was his son-in-law. Doug had married his daughter. He fathered a child named Kyle Eastland. And Kyle Eastland is now my brother-in-law. He married my sister. Weird deal. Wow. Yeah. And that has no, that, that had no determination on me buying the company. It just happened to be a coincidence. So you're related to Steve Martin. By marriage. Down the line, yeah. <laughs> By marriage. <laughs> yeah. Clean by <But>, uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so after uh, Doug's, then there was a fire. So, anyway, they had it down on uh, 6th and Washington downtown. And they ended up uh, moving it because they they were afraid it was going to catch fire because it was an old building. They uh, moved it up this road to 4th and uh, Waco Drive. Well, ironically, that building ended up catching fire back in, like, the mid-'90s. So they lost everything. And so Standard Hat Works, basically, there was no equipment, no hats, no nothing. So Doug ended up selling it to another guy named Richard Dick. He ended up selling it to another guy named Lenny Lawson, and I ended up buying it from Lenny. You say Richard Dick? Ricky Dick, yeah. His name is Richard His Dick. His name is Richard Dick. His so name is Dick Dick. Dick Dick. Dick, Dick. <laughs> or Richard Richard. <laughs> Either one. Dick Dick. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. It is funny. Well, Who would do that? How many times have you heard that? Dick hey, Squared. I've never heard that. So yeah, so this is Dick Squared. <laughs> Yo, so, Dick Squared. <laughs> The uh, previous owner ended up buying a bunch of the equipment back, and I was lucky enough to have pretty much a complete operating shop whenever I bought it. Yeah. So that helped a lot. But yeah, it's it's changed hands several years. I mean, several times and over the years. But it's the second oldest business in Waco. So it's it's still, you know, hanging in there. Uh, We've made it through depression and recession. And if we just keep building enough, I feel like we build a quality product and just keep, you know, trying to hone our our craft, then we'll we'll sustain anything, you know, and hopefully be another around another 110 years or 111 years. And you say will, but it's you back there making those hats. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, and yeah. And I Catherine say we, me the, and Catherine. Yeah, yeah, you and Catherine, and now Julia. Julia well, Julia's not making anything, but she's well, she's helping. She's, helping. Yeah. she's, she's she, great help. She's we, doing. Uh, she's doing your she's social doing, media. Now. Yeah, man, which has been a huge help, dude. Yeah, it you is know how that goes. Yes, absolutely. That can be overwhelming very quickly, yeah. and people expect you to respond like that. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. they, they think you're just sitting around. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know you don't respond to them in a day. Like they think you don't like them or don't want their business or whatever, and it's not the case. It's like I've been making hats for 14 hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? I haven't had a chance to look at my social media. Or whatever, Very much that so. type of world though now yeah. in, in terms of like now. Yeah, I need it now. Now. And like, well, like they want hats now. You yeah. know, and it's like well, what's your, what's we, your, we what? build each one one. You know, at the time, you know, it's these are not, handcrafted. Yeah, these are works of art. You don't just get one now, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, you come to the shop. You want to do it the right way. Yeah. You go through the experience. You go to the shop. You get fitted. Right. You pick out this color. You pick out this shape. This band. Yep. There are notes taken. Yeah. You know, it is an ordeal. And he's got to order the body, get it in. I mean, you're looking yeah. at if you want to do it right, six months. Yeah, we're a six month wait right now. But, yeah, but no, and also get to see all the the cool um, memorabilia we have. You know, we have some cool stuff up there. A lot of pictures of y'all, and you have guitars uh, hanging guitars up. That artists and, have given to yeah. you. I mean, just coming to the shop itself is fun. Just looking around at the shit on the walls, you know. And we're gonna, like I said, we're we're trying to keep 
we're trying to keep building on that every year. And so we're going to have some artists, you know, we want a little Jinx area and a little Josh Ward area and maybe a little Midland area, you know, where we kind of start, you know, paying some tribute to y'all and some pictures and hats and stuff like that. So yeah, man, we're going to keep building and building. And we're actually trying to go on the road this year. At the end of this month, we're supposed to go to Nashville and do our first pop-up event. So, um... So we'll see how that goes. We want to kind of branch out and be able to get to some more of our, our customers and clients out that can't make the trek to Waco mm-hmm. and do some personal one-on-one fitting and shaping and take some hats out there and maybe do some stuff on the spot, you know, and uh, just try to try to reach a broader audience. You know, I'm trying to learn from you, you know, as far as getting out away from Texas and trying to yeah. really, you know, branch out to, to some people and so we're going to try to make a couple of stops this year. And, you know, we're looking at the West Coast. We've never been out there and maybe a Northeast and, you know, try to make make some cool stops and make it worth going to, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's really exciting. I'm excited about that. I've never done that before. So see, next year we're going to we're going to Stagecoast next year. You know, because you go one year on, one year off, one year on, one year off. And uh, we're going back. It's April of next year. There we go. Maybe that'll be a potential I don't know if that's confirmed. I can neither confirm <laughs> nor deny. Nor deny. <laughs> I, I enjoy that festival, so I'm excited. But I love. I, I do love that festival. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be back out there again. But that would be a good one. Like if we wanted to tour out there together, you jump on a leg and just absolutely head to California and and, and set up out there. We, I don't know. We'll have to see how that hell works. Yeah. See, see if we can throw some hats in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Do, so, you and Dan like can share the trailer. I'm down, man. We'll we'll uh, uh, we'll, we'll throw all your equipment in the trailer, and you can. Uh, you can make hats from the bus. Now, I'm, dude, I'm 100 percent in. All right, we'll see. We'll, I'll, I'll talk to my people. See what we can do. <laughs> my people talk to your people. Yeah. And, uh, There's there not go. that many people around my people. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're talking to them. <laughs> You're talking to my people right now. Yeah. But uh, no, that'd be cool. And I, I think uh, the way the hat industry is right now, we can, you know, we could really get some good customers and and hopefully get some customers for life. But you talk about growing. How do you grow when you're the only one making them? I mean, you're going to have to at some point in That's time hard. bring somebody in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And my wife has been on me for years, the past couple of years. But it's hard, man. It's like it's your baby. Yeah. And I mean, it's like when y'all try to bring somebody on to the band, you don't want to just bring a a warm body on you want to bring somebody on that's going to be productive and it's going to add to your sound you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's kind of where i'm at i want i don't want just another warm body that can shape a hat because most of the time anyway when they come in they ask for me because i have had other people work for me uh but just a lot of times they'll come in and they'll just ask for me anyway it's hard finding good help you know what i mean it's hard finding people that really care and that want to put the, the effort into it you know and again when people drive as far as they drive to come down and see us. I don't want them to be not taken care of in the proper way. So I, it's a lot of it's me. It's, it's, I, I hold myself back, but I also feel like if I can still put a good product out there that people are willing to wait for, that we still can survive. Well, you know here's the I mean? thing too. You don't want to bring somebody in and teach them everything and then have them go up. That's the other side. Right down the road. Yeah. And trust me, we've so, had that issue before yeah, too. So I remember we talked about that. So yeah. But so, I mean, it's, it's hard for me, and I've I mean, trust me. Me and Art have talked extensively about this, and because uh, Art kind of has the same mindset to you know to his business, you know, I mean, he's very much involved in it, and you know, has his way of doing things and stuff like that. And we kind of similar on the or similar in the in the sense that it's hard to let go of it. You know what I mean? It's hard to trust somebody that you've worked all this time, put all this effort, and spent all these nights, you know, away from your family doing. And put it in somebody else's hands and hope that it works out. And if it doesn't, you know, then now they're pissed off and you now you got to fire somebody and that's a whole nother deal. It's just, I don't know, it's hard for me. So yeah, I, I want to grow, but it's just going to have to be a steady growth. You know what I mean? It's, when we, I, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason like we talked about. And I believe that Julie was brought on at the right time. I believe my next person will be brought on at the right time. Maybe, you know maybe I mean? the, the opportunity will present itself. Mm-hmm. The person will present themselves at the appropriate time. Absolutely. When the money's right and when the time's right and the person's right, then to me it'll all happen. So I don't know. I'm kind of taking that approach. And until then, like I said, we just try to – we work, we work hard. We work long hours. And we try to do the best we can. So Yeah, but once you go hat, you never go back. Amen, right. brother. <laughs> I, I was going to say that too. That was yeah. we, we came up with that on the, on the That's first what all night. those long hours are for, yeah. though. Uh, you know? Once you go hat, you never go back. That's, That's right. exactly right. Oh man! If you do make your way down to Cameron's shop. Look for that uh, picture on the wall that says that. Yeah, signed by signed by Cody. Yeah, I yeah. signed one. There's a few of them. I like it though. But yeah. you know what? We're looking at uh, some like big like those uh, roll up poster things. You know, like displays for our uh, promotional things on. You know, when we're doing. Uh, Remember that thing we used to have that pull up? 
Yeah. Yeah. So when we go on like remotes, we'll have like a Cody Jinx one and we'll have maybe a Sonny Sweeney one or something like that. Yeah. But we're, we want to have like a nice portrait of you, you know, wearing the hat and everything, but we're going to put quotes on it. And I think that, that quote's one of the ones that we put, we're putting on that one. So <laughs> what about me? I have, I have better quotes than that. I don't, I don't, I don't can't, can't think of any right now, but. <laughs> You might have one. I don't know. I don't know. Look, no, just, she, use, just use that use one. That I'm one. not going to beat that. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, we'll 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 look for some, but <laughs> we're we're going to be putting quotes and stuff like that. We're going to make it really cool. You so. could you could do like you and Sonny next to each other and put "She's all mine" like oh. on the hat, on the hat, like the hat's all yours. That's a horrible <laughs> idea. That's the worst idea. Because 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 people, are people because, the wrong way. Sun, yeah. because yeah. Sonny and my wife both would laugh at that, but then <laughs> exactly. people, people would like, be like, the wrong people way. would look at me like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. Oh man! Now they would look at me like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so you go back on him. I, I would be getting a phone call from Art so fast. Yeah, but it wouldn't so, be our. Best it's cross promotion, Art. Don't worry about yeah, it. Man. No, it's good. It's, it's, it looks good. They I, look I'll tell you how to do your job, Art. You stay over there now. Yeah. To ask you how to make this happen? No. Shut up. All right, I would never say that to you. You know that. <laughs> yeah. No, but no, we're going to do The funny thing some... is he does know. <laughs> no, he knows I wouldn't. <laughs> but no, I think that's a great... Uh, and, you know, honestly, a lot of our artists are becoming, you know, true grid artists. I mean, y'all got Paul Cawthon on, I heard now. Which is very cool. Nikki Lane. Nikki Lane. Wow. That's 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 recent. Nobody knows. Wow. Oh. Well, congratulations. Hopefully yeah. people know by the time this they'll, is out. They'll know by the time yeah. this is out. Well, man, like I said, I mean, just great people surrounded by great people. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, it's growing. I'm so happy for y'all, man. Y'all, have, y'all are the epitome. I tell everybody, y'all are the epitome of how it should be done. We're kind of like I mean? the mafia. It's it's, it's kinda, cool we, though. We can we can do a little bit of everything. Like you need a hat, I get yeah, you a hat. I get you a hat. You need some it's music. Cost you. I got some music. It's cost you. <laughs> you need some duck calls. I can get, get some, you some yeah. duck calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need waiters. <laughs> you need some waiters. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. Might be able to help I you take, out. Take How about some sunglasses? <laughs> no, it is. You want it some is. dudes, it's, it's some hey oh, dudes. Yeah, hey yeah. Dudes, yeah. You, know, you need some socks. We got. I got I guess, stance. I guess stance in my back pocket. Sacks underwear. Yeah. yeah. Buckle jeans. Boy, we are just keep going. Ching. Just, yeah. let, let, let's yeah. let's keep get all these them. sponsors. Yeah. In. We need to be. Con- we need to be cashing in on this shit. Come on now. Yeah. It's, thanks to Bobby Keith, we all shop at the Buckle now. Yeah. Hey man, the jeans are the best things you can get. Look at Josh. Dude, I've been wearing these Fultons. These Fultons are the best. Are the best. Ever they're the best. Buckle Fultons them. are the best. And, and then y'all got me on sacks. Oh, oh they're sacks underwear. Oh, dude, I'm working. Guys, if you don't know about sacks underwear, look them up. Y'all thank us later. They're absolutely, I promise. And it's, the it's jeans. It's the most comfortable your, your Junk. stuff is going to be ever. No chafing. And then Bobby Keith bought me two pairs of uh, uh dudes, which was freaking phenomenal. Yeah, man, those are awesome. Uh, I'm wearing hey dudes right now. I would yeah. be, but I was trying to dress up for you. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you look, I want to look presentable. <laughs> you want to you. dress up for the podcast? You yeah. going to be on the air. <laughs> Good. <laughs> My mom always said I had a face for radio. You have a face for hey, radio. Josh, somebody said that about you the other day, Bobby. <laughs> no, he ta- he said I had a voice for radio. Oh, Thank you okay. very much. Oh, uh, the voice you for do, radio. You do kind of sound like My a... My face is just music. fine. Well, this I is think, Josh yeah, So folks say I have a voice for radio. I tend to disagree. Sounds like whiskey poured over warm ice. Mm-hmm. And a hot cigar. Well, yeah. this is getting too Josh deep. Josh All right. Thompson. So one time, one time, just a little shout out, um, because we just lost this young lady a couple days ago. Her name was Layla. Yeah, she man. was six years old and she was battling brain cancer during the 2019 Fair and Rodeo. Uh, she got to come to your shop. Yes, she did. And get fitted for a hat. She did. Yeah. Tell us a little that bit about cool, that. That was cool, man. Honestly, man, when I got the phone call about it, I was just, I, of course, I was willing to do it. You know what I mean? They were like, you know, Layla's, um, you know, this and this is going on. She's got terminal cancer and she's going to the fair and rodeo and Aaron Watson's going to have her out there. And, and, uh, she wants a cowboy hat, you know, or needs a cowboy hat for that night. I'm like, well, yeah, absolutely. Bring her by. She, uh, she, her and her sister, she has a twin. And so her and her sister came by and, uh, we found them some hats and we shaped them up. And I gave Layla this magic card. We had this magician come into the shop one day and he was. Was doing all this magic for us and me and Catherine. And so he did this magic card where he had me sign one card and then had Catherine sign another card. And then when he pulled his final card, the card had my signature on one side and had Catherine's signature on the other side. So he took off of two cards and put them onto one. So it was a magic card. And I'd sit back on my <clears throat> on my desk to like give it to somebody special, somebody cool, you know. And so when Layla came in, I was like, well, I gotta give her this card. So 
Uh, we shaped up her hat, and I got Catherine to attach that kind of card onto the side of her hat. Kind of looked kind of cool. And then I gave her sister the the ribbon and the feather that I was wearing on my hat because I didn't want her sister to feel left out. You know, sure. I mean? uh, we fixed them up, man. They gave me big hugs and got to visit with them for about an hour or so. I mean, just some of the sweetest hearts that you've ever met. You know what I mean? Like the one thing I was really worried about when I got the phone call was was breaking down and crying when they come in there because I mean there's nothing that gets to me more than little kids, sick kids. Yeah, it's the worst. So absolutely. So that was my biggest fear was like when they would walk in, I'd see the actual faces and stuff. Like I start crying. You yeah. know what I mean? So I was just praying that I didn't do that, which I didn't. I held it together, but no, you cry after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So she came by and um, had a great time, had her family there, fit them up, uh, got all that stuff on there for them. She got to go to the concert, got to meet Aaron, got to sit up on stage. She had like, he had a little special couch for her and uh, her and her family. And I got to sit up there and just a really, really special time, man. And uh, last Thursday, she, uh, she lost her battle, man. And it's just, it's a sad deal, dude. It puts everything in perspective. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we've talked before. We're all dads. Yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, it's just, you know, it ain't supposed to happen that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to, not to innocent souls like that. And so I, I always am grateful for meeting people like that. You know sure. what I mean? Cause they always keep you back or get you back down to reality. And like, you know, it's easy for sometimes for you to get carried away and all the bullshit. Yeah. And like that kind of stuff right there just grounds you. Oh and yeah. So yeah. Um, and brings it all back in perspective. And so, man, as, as sad as I'm, I am for the whole situation. I am grateful that I got to meet her and got to meet her family. And I mean, they're great people. And yeah. I hate to, that she's lost. But the way I look at it is God got another angel and, you know. Well, and, and, and you know, what you and, you know, just that, that whole day between, you know, the time she got to spend with you the time she got to spend with Aaron, that's a badass day for anybody, yeah. you know? So, you know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bring that up as a downer. I wanted to bring that up as a positive because you're right. You do great things. And like I said, there's another angel. So, uh, you know, enough about that. Here's to, to Layla and her family. And, Absolutely. Uh, well, I think that God video, bless I think her. you can catch that video. Too. Yeah. That, yeah. There's a video out there. Yeah, about it's it, on a KWTX. Yeah. But, but yeah, anyway, she's a sweetheart, man. Love, love that. I'm love. I love that I get to do that. I'm, I, I love that. You know, something that I'm a part of it makes people's lives. Well, the opportunities better, you know that I mean? you get doing what you do, you know, oftentimes people, because like like we were saying, uh, there's a story behind every hat. Everybody's got a story. You yeah. hear the stories. Yeah, I hear the stories. You know, with Absolutely. people that come and and talk talk with us, and that that whole middle shelf right there, that's all military and and police uh, badges, patches, medals, bracelets, there, IDs, just. You know all that kind of stuff, and you know it's the the human element because you're you're never going to forget that little girl. Absolutely, never ever. Today yeah. I die. No, you're exactly right. Yeah. But you know, it also I think in a sense validates what we do too. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, There's a bigger picture. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, just think about how many lives you've touched through what you do. It's a platform. You know what I mean? And and how many. How many lives you've got to influence based on what you do? And and so those times when you think about, you know, am I doing the right thing? You know, especially in the heart, the earlier days, you know, when things were hard and tough and, you know, money wasn't there and stuff like that. You know, is it really worth it? Am I really doing the right thing? And then you have steps along the way that validates it. You know what I mean? And that's one of the step, That's one of the things along the way to me that helps validate what we do. And again, I'm sure you see it all the time too. Somebody gives you a heartwarming story or how they've touched your, how you've touched their lives or whatever. You know what I mean? To me, that's also one of the rewarding things for you know what we do, and it just makes the risk all that much better. You know, it does. You know, and like I remember not that long ago. Not that far removed. It was one of those days I didn't want to be anywhere. Not just on the road, but I didn't want to be anywhere. You know, slug my way through the show. You know, show was great, and this and that, and this and that. And after the show, I met this little girl. I don't know how old she was. She wasn't very old. She just wanted to say hi and take a picture and, and tell me that she loved my music. That was it. You know, it's like, all right, cool. I'm better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just, no, just and, it's, and that's right. And that's those little things, though. I mean, like yeah. you said, I mean, you have a little girl that probably been sitting there for 30 minutes waiting for you to an yeah. hour or whatever, waiting for you to come out. And that just made her year, life, whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. And that's to me, that's the fun stuff about what we get to do. Yeah. And nobody tells us how we can do it and what we can do. No. We do it on our own terms. Yeah. And to me, that's fun. It is. And that's the way it should be. And that's why we do what we do. And that's why that's why we run our own businesses. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen. Well, hey, man, I'm good. You guys got anything else? Good. 
I'm All sure right. I've talked to y'all zero off. No, no, man. This, this has been good. great. This has been absolutely great. Thank you, for, um, thank you for Cameron Morris, yeah, thank man. you so much. Thank you for, for taking a day because it, it, you spent the whole day up here. Well, thank he you could, for having made, me, man. I like that. I feel like four hats. You could have been making hats and making money, but <laughs> instead he came up here to talk to my dumb ass. I think, I think coming up here and drinking beer and hanging out was a lot of fun. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Morris, uh, Standard Hat Works, standardhatworks.com. Uh, if you're in Waco, Texas or passing through Waco, Texas, stop in, ask for Cameron, just say hi, swap some stories, have a hat worked on, get fitted for a hat. He will do you right. I promise you that. To my left, Josh Thompson. Yep. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. To my right, Bobby Keith. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And again, Cameron, thanks, man. Oh, thank you all. I really appreciate y'all having me on. Absolutely. All right. This has been a couple in with Cody Jinx. We'll see you next time.